Good morning, everybody, morning. and welcome to Uniting Church Sketty on Palm Sunday. This morning, I'd like you to stand, please, for the Bible. So welcome to everyone here. Also welcome to people who will watch on Zoom and also later on in the week online. And this morning's service is taken by Reverend Louise Goff. Jesus of the shadows, Christ of the scars, familiar with sorrow, acquainted with grief, suffering with this suffering world beside us in our pain. We have fractured the planet, tend our wounds and mend our brokenness. By your cross and your life laid down, lead us on the paths to life. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And they clothed him with a purple and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Let us pray. Jesus, Riding into danger, the crowds cried out for you to save them, hailing you as the deliverer, as king. Later, the authorities turned you into a parody. Soldiers mocked as the crown of thorns pierced your skin and the royal purple cloak billowed around your bleeding body. Jesus, misunderstood and disregarded, you had already shown the way, compassion and love for all. For the sake of our planet, remind us all of our humanity and help us to embody a similar revolution in the face of destruction, an endless capacity for kindness, gentleness and love. Amen. Jesus of the shadows, Christ of the scars, for the sake of our aching world, help us to follow you. Amen. Thank you, Lynn and Les. That was a good way to start this very important and special and difficult week, Holy Week. And from now on, we follow Jesus very closely as he makes his way into Jerusalem and begins the chain of devastating events that lead to his cross. We have got some special services this week I know they're on the notices, but just to highlight a service here on Maundy Thursday at 7pm and Good Friday at half past two. 
and I hope that you can join us here or on Zoom. And don't forget to bring a flower for the cross next Sunday, Easter Sunday. It's good to see you to worship on Palm Sunday. But today we're not just going to think about that, but about what happens afterwards. And today our service is going to finish as we sing our final hymn. And after that, please feel free to remain quietly and pray or leave quietly. It will all become clear. But for now, it's Palm Sunday. And so we're going to begin joyfully. And we're going to say part of the processional psalm, Psalm 118. So when I say Hosanna, can you respond, Hosanna to the son of David? I haven't put it on the screen because I know you're all clever. So you just have to remember, Hosanna to the son of David. And please be as loud as you like. I know we're brought up to be quiet in church, but today, just for now, you can be really loud. And if you want to wave your palm cross in this bit, you can as well. Give thanks to God, because God is good and God's love is eternal. Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Open to me the gates of the temple. We will go in and give thanks to the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. With branches in our hands, start the festival and march around the altar. Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. You are our God and we give you thanks. Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Give thanks to God because God is good and God's love is eternal. Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Let us pray. Jesus, on this day of excitement and celebration, as crowds gather and people cheer, we come before you with psalms of worship to sing your praise and welcome you as King. Amen. So in a moment, we're going to sing our first hymn and we've got some people with branches over there who are going to wave them about and perhaps walk about. And if you want to join in, that's fine. But we might need some traffic control regulations because at the same time, we're also going to make our offering and I will dedicate it silently. So we'll do all of this as we sing our first hymn. And if you're following in the book, it's 262, All Glory, Lord and Honour.
That was really excellent branch waving over there, really excellent. And it is lovely to see you here this morning. It's lovely to see all of you. And it's always lovely to have our adventurers. But to make a change, just for this week, in a minute, I'm going to ask Pam to come and tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing today. So I'm sorry if that spoils the surprise. And I know that for everybody here, hearing what you've been up to while we've been in here is the best bit of the service. But today we're not going to do that. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Just this once. We're going to hear before and at the end of the service next week, you can bring all the things you've been doing and we can have a look all together. But we do look forward to seeing you for refreshments and perhaps seeing some of your work then as well. So we will miss you at the end, but we're glad you're here now. And I'm going to hand over to Pam. And Rosemary. <laughs> well, today we're going to cover quite a lot because being Palm Sunday, we will be talking obviously about Palm Sunday. And we've done our waving of our branches already. And then we are going to do the story of the Last Supper. And in, I think the first thing we're going to do, though, which Rosemary will explain, is our Easter garden. And after that, then, we'll have our story of the Last Supper, and then we're going to make crosses, which are going to be fridge magnets. They're going to colour them in and write on them in their own words, and then they can take them home, and we have a word search as well. So we're going to be quite busy today. So now I'll hand it over to Rosemary to tell you about our Easter garden. Yeah, you'll all have seen in the notices that we've asked the adults if they can bring a bunch of daffodils next Sunday so we can decorate the church for Easter Sunday. Well, we wanted to get the children involved, so I thought they could make us an Easter garden. So that's what we'll be doing this morning, and we'll be putting it, hopefully, when it's done, on display in the passageway so you'll all be able to see it later on thank you that's really good to hear and good news but the bad news is you can't all go <laughs> so we're going to say a, a prayer for you as you go and then when we've said that prayer we'll, we'll all say the lord's prayer together and the words are on the screen Let's pray. Loving God, bless our adventurers this morning in all that they do to think of the events of this week. Walk with them through Holy Week and fill them with the joy of Easter. We ask your blessing on, and your love on us all. Amen. And we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So we hope you have a wonderful time and we look forward to seeing you after for coffee. We're going to say our prayers our prayers of adoration to God. So let us pray. O oh Jesus, this is the day we rejoice. We rejoice in the roar of the crowd, in the excitement and expectation, in the hope that the age has finally come when God's justice will dawn and you will save us. 
This is the day drenched by the sun, which filters through branches laden with palms and warms the road, the road to your destiny, the road to your death. This is the day we sing out your glory. But how quickly the shadows fall. Jesus, before your life is drained out, before hope fades and darkness descends, before beauty withers and tears rain like petals from hearts filled with love, we offer ourselves to you in wonder and praise. We worship you on the day filled with festivity, yet tinged with danger, with fear. Jesus, as we worship and as we tell the story of your self-giving love, keep us close by your side. All our adoration belongs to you. Amen. We're going to hear the Gospel reading from Mark, the story of Palm Sunday. I'm reading Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11, and it's on page 1015 in the Pew Bibles. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Amen. Maybe you felt it. That moment of quiet, just before the storm breaks, when everything feels still, tense, but still, and the static charge makes the hairs of your body stand on end. Or maybe you've been in a place of worship that's all dressed ready for a solemn occasion, but no one's got there yet and it's just waiting. The atmosphere clinging to the walls and soon you'll be breathing it, those spores of lingering expectation. Well, it was as though the whole of Jerusalem was waiting, poised to receive the visiting hordes, anticipating the inevitable descent into chaos. It was the same every year. Pilgrims from every walk of life 
submerged the heaving city, inflating its population by thousands. Residents and merchants had been preparing for weeks, renting out their homes, making special loaves for the temple offering, taking every opportunity to make money. Already there were hundreds of tents on the city's outskirts, tents and stalls. Everywhere you looked, the wares of Passover, religion and commercial opportunity hands in hand. And the soldiers, so many soldiers. Passover was trouble, capital T. The biggest festival of the year, the city on high alert. All that talk of liberation, God's rescue mission, God's act to ch save the chosen people. It raised hopes and stirred discontent. And those who wanted the Romans out were quick to make their point. And where shouting erupted, fists flew and punches rained. That's why I was so worried about him. It wasn't as though he hadn't warned us. Three times he'd said he'd have to go up to Jerusalem, where he'd be handed over to the chief priests and scribes, and they'd condemn him to death. Cold fear went through me every time I thought about it. When he asked me to go and borrow that donkey, I knew this was it. He'd have been safe. But he had to be in Jerusalem. He insisted. There was no swaying him once he'd fixed his mind on something. It was all just as he said. A donkey tied as though waiting and the message to the owner was, the Lord needs her. Fair play to the owner, he didn't bat an eye. The prophet Zechariah couldn't have put it better. Tell the daughters of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey. I didn't like it. I didn't like Jesus playing such a dangerous game. He knew the connotations of those words. Everybody knew. He must have known too how many before Passover claiming to be the one sent by God to bring liberation and to fill the ultimate promise of another great David on the throne. Every year the same. Every year crowds booing and baying, jostling and jeering. Every year bloody noses and arrests. Roman soldiers throwing their weight around. These would-be messiahs didn't do anything for the Jewish cause. But our Jesus, he was different. We knew, knew he was special. He'd asked us once and we'd come straight out with it. You are the messiah. But even that made him twitchy, uncomfortable. That was the first time he mentioned his death. I couldn't suppress the shivers when close to Jerusalem, though the sweat was pouring off me in the blazing sun. No need for my cloak. But if I wanted it, Jesus, we heard the crowd. We traveled the outskirts of the city 
People streamed from the tents to join in, food for Jesus to walk on. Others tore branches from the trees. She walked the makeshift royal road as a conventional mode of travel for those wanting to trumpet their status. And then the chanting started. A few at first, then the whole crowd seemed to catch on, chanting in time the same words over and over again. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David. Did they really think Jesus was the one? Did they really believe he was the Messiah God promised? Again and again they called out to Jesus for God to save them. God, save us now, save us now. That's what Hosanna means. They were actually blessing Jesus, the one who had come in God's name to save them. I looked at Jesus. He wasn't looking at the crowd. His gaze was fixed straight ahead. His eyes focused on the city gates. His expression thoughtful, determined. He seemed at ease with himself. If he sensed danger, he wasn't showing it. On and on the chanting went louder and louder. Hosanna, God, save us now, save us now. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Did they even know who he was? But they followed him, waving, cheering, celebrating, calling out to Jesus as though he were their king, making a carnival of the whole event, enjoying a public holiday, joyful to be on pilgrimage, festive at the festival. People were laughing, shouting and celebrating like it was one big impromptu street party. When Jesus got through the gates, it all changed. There were soldiers lining the city walls, religious leaders robed and red-faced in the heat. There were the richer pilgrims, self-professed superior pilgrims, devout and religious, staying in the choice city dwellings rather than the tents. And the indignant whisper went round, who is this? Who is this? Who does he think he is? Their answer was implied by their sneers. He is not the son of David. He is not the saviour of the Jewish people. He is not the saviour of the world. He is Jesus, just Jesus, a common name for a common man. Popular, maybe, ideas above his station, certainly, but just Jesus, a jumped up prophet from Galilee, that dull backwater of dimwits, nobodies, and fools. They were right and they were wrong. As the week progressed, nothing could dissuade Jesus from his silent conviction. He was the one who is going to prove God's love, turn everything upside down, bring the longed for liberation but not in any of the ways they had foreseen. No criticism, no question, no abandonment, no betrayal, no prayer, no trial, no crowd crowing for his crucifixion, no mocking, no beating, no blood, no heavy wood, was going to stop Jesus' steady walk towards his destiny. And there, outside the city, on a hill 
called the skull. The cross was fashioned, waiting. We're going to sing the hymn on the sheet or on the screen. Ride on, ride on. From there, the dream deteriorated. Everything twisted out of control. The carnival colour drained to sepia before blacking out. Jesus was on a helter-skelter to hell, bent, it seemed, on his own destruction. There was no talking to him. On Sunday, yes, he was celebrated. All Jerusalem proclaiming his praises, waving palms, shouting Hosanna, pinning all their hopes on a donkey riding king. On Monday, he was feared, scattering coins, overturning tables, burning with justice longing for God's temple to be a house of prayer. On Tuesday, he was suspect, arguing with the lawyers, debating with the priests, springing each trap, defeating logic and law with love. On Wednesday, he was anointed, provoking criticism, greed and envy sweet-smelling, costly fragrance, extravagantly broken for his burial. He honoured the gift and the giver. 
on Thursday, he was busy celebrating Passover with his disciples, breaking bread for his body, pouring wine for his blood. And when the candles burned low, he retreated to the shadows of the garden, praying in anguish while his disciples slept and drank deep from the cup of suffering. Kissed by a betrayer, carried off by an armed and violent crowd, denied by his friends, standing before the chief priests, he didn't say a word. And the shout was deafening. Crucify him! On Friday, they ended it all. And that was it. It was too much for us. We, the friends of Jesus, his trusted disciples, who believed ourselves men of courage and honour and loyalty. Apart from that rat, that traitor, that parasite Judas. All of us ran away. We didn't look back. We scarpered, we scattered, just as he had said. None of us heard the shouts. We were too far away by then, cowering, hiding. But the stories reached us later. Those rigged trials. How Peter denied him though it hurt him to tell us. The release of Barabbas, the cries for crucifixion, the cruel manhandling and mocking of Jesus. How quickly the people rejected the one they'd hoped for and hailed as king. I'd heard he couldn't even carry his own cross. Someone else had to do it. And Jesus, high upon that cross of torture, flogged, mocked, stripped, a crown of thorns upon his bruised and bleeding head, force-fed vinegar on a sponge, taunted even by those who hung beside him, abandoned by his friends, feeling cast off by God, cried loudly and oppressed under the dense, dark sky, he breathed his last.
Look at the cross. Look at the thorny crown, the purple cloak. King Jesus. Really? A king with no with no answers, with no power, except to go quietly to a violent death. A king recognised too late by the one who betrayed him. A king in the hands of a secular power failing to take responsibility. A king passed over to save the life of a bandit as crowds bade for his death. Jesus, king of the Jews, or a bound and bleeding man infused with divine love, embodying God's suffering in the presence of all pain. We're going to sing to mock your reign, O dearest Lord. Let us pray. Jesus, how can things change so quickly? How can you be hailed as a hero and so soon condemned to a criminal's death? Your body broken, tortured, bleeding. How can they have done this to you? Why are your hands such gentle hands which held the child, bathed closed eyes, reached, reached out to bless, broke the bread? Why are your hands punctured with nails? 
Why are your fates such faithful fates which walked on water, danced in delights, carried you through villages and towns so you could bring it for justice and hungered for love? Why are your feet impaled below straining limbs? Why is your head such a creative head filled with stories to bring God near and challenge the complacent and stir the conscience and stimulate faith packed with words of love from a compassionate heart? Why is your head scorched by the Friday sun, wounded by thorns? Broken Jesus, sagging on a cross for all to see. In your suffering, you share our suffering. You know what it is to ache, to break, to bleed and bear the weight of pain and disappointment and injustice and evil, hunger, worry, fear and grief. You are one with all who know physical, mental, spiritual and emotional pain. So we bring our prayers for the displaced people of the world, victims of war and violence and disaster. We bring our prayers for the oppressed and abused, for the neglected and the forgotten, those who suffer the anxious, the lonely, and the ill. We pray for all who feel isolated and immobilised. Cross-bearing Jesus, and you hear us now. In the silence, we bring our prayers to you. Jesus, bearer of all suffering, of all hope, of all love, attentive to our prayers, even on your cross, receive all our gratitude and all our love. Amen. This reading can be found on page 1023 of the Pew Bible. The Death of Jesus. At noon, the whole country was covered with darkness, which lasted for three hours. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eloi, Eloi, Lemma Sabash Thani, which means, My God, my God, why did you abandon me? Some of the people there heard him and listened and said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. One of them ran up with a sponge, 
soaked it in cheap wine and put it on the end of a stick. Then he held it up to Jesus and said, wait, let us see if Elijah is coming to bring him down from the cross. And with a loud cry, Jesus died. The curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The army officer who was standing there in front of the cross saw how Jesus had died. This man was really the son of God, he said. Jesus, the palm branches from your royal procession lie abandoned, trampled on the road. Your disciples have run away. Your well-wishers have yelled for your death. Your hands, which blessed, hang limp now. Your words of love have been silenced. Your hopes are crushed. Your life is spent. Your breath is gone. Does your story end like this? As we go from this place, may the fragile fallen petals of your love whisper the truth that after death comes life.